And we welcome you to the PIAA Class 1A Boys semifinal matchup here from Shippensburg High School in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. On the NFHS Network, I'm Luke Brown for a stacked matchup. Two schools that have combined three losses on this year. It's the Mountaineers of Berlin Brothers Valley and the Warriors of Linville Hill. A trip to Hershey is on the line. Berlin Brothers Valley and Linville Hill know this feeling all too well. They met in last year's PIAA semifinal matchup. Berlin Brothers Valley won that one, ended up losing the title game to Amani Christian, and here they sit one year later in the same predicament. Linville Hill off to an early start with a three from Darian Peterson. Linville Hill off to a 3-0 start. Back the other way, an air ball three. A rare sight for Hayden Hutzel. And it looks like another, another knock to Hutzel as he's called for the foul. Linville Hill inbounds for St. Juiced. He gives it over to Drew Tibbins, running point. He's guarded by Hutzel, now double teamed. All the way at the logo, gets a pass off just in time. Linville Hill again offensively off to a 3-0 start and another offensive rebound. It's taken away. Hutzel redeems himself, gets the ball up to Pace Prosser. Now a corner three to tie it early. No good, another strong arm three by Berlin Brothers Valley. A quick start offensive game. And here's another three, Linville Hill off the back of the iron and no good. Rebound goes to Pace Prosser, who is the guy for Burlett. He's committed to Gannon University. This time he misses. The scraps are picked up by Giovanni St. Just, who puts it in. It's three to two. Ball's all the way back on the other side for Linville Hill. St. Just working one on one. Now goes inside and called for a charge. Stays a 3-2 game and the ball goes back to Berlin. It'll be inbounded by McKelvey Ford to Out Pace Prosser. Prosser who Pace has first. been around the block a little bit now. I think he's earned the right to say that. He's committed to Gannon. He's a three sport athlete, a quarterback in football, the point guard in basketball. And oh, by the way, when he finishes up this basketball run, he'll get right into baseball season. There's a long two that did not go for Craig Jarvis. Uh, Linville Hill, a travel. And Berlin Brothers Valley again gets the chance to take the lead. And there throughout the whole gym, you can hear Linville Hill coach Mike Schatzman yelling out instructions. Spent 15 years at Peckway Valley, and now he's the coach of Linville Hill, a team that's won three District 3 1A championships. Here's Prosser. And he gets it and has the early lead back in the hands of the Mountaineers. Four to three. Drew Tibbins down inside to Smucker. Smucker back to Tibbins. Inside has plenty of space for a shot. The 5'10 sophomore starter gets the job done. The lead's back in the hands of Linville Hill. So far, we've got a back and forth game, and that continues right there with two from Hutzel. Hutzel, another three sport athlete for Berlin Brothers Valley. He'll get into baseball season as soon as this run comes to a close. And they're hoping that does not happen tonight. I'm sure any of these guys will tell their baseball coach to hold on as long as you can. There's a jump ball in the middle of the floor. A great effort by Craig Jarvis. The inbound again will come from McKelvey Four. Possession arrow flips and Pace Prosser brings it across the floor. Prosser off his foot lands in a teammate's hands. Now it's tipped up and ends in Linville Hill's hands. Prosser knocks it back up. Back and forth we go with 447 in period number one. 7-5 game, Prosser, long triple, no good. Plenty of rebounders for Linville Hill as they get back the other way. Everyone, 
Giovanni Sejust setting up the offense in front of a rabid Berlin crowd full of blue. And a foul. Checking into this one is Levi Leonard, the 6'2 sophomore that kind of provides that big body presence for Berlin Brothers Valley. Inbound is tipped up and still a loose ball, nearly crosses half court. Linville Hill off the rim, no good. 6-5 early lead for Berlin Brothers Valley. Crosser trying to find a quarter three. They go back up to the top of the key. Prosser with tight defense. They're going to try to eliminate the threat of Prosser as much as they can. There's a foul called on Drew Timmons. Jarvis nails down his first. Jarvis earlier this year scored 61 in a win for Berlin over Juniata Valley. That was on December 18th as the year was starting up. Since then he has not slowed down. 21.5 points per game for him. It's 20 points, seven rebounds and four assists in their semifinals win over Lancaster Country Day. 75-48 the final against Lancaster Country Day. Winville Hill obviously being a Lancaster school as well. Here's a takeaway for Prosser. And he gets the layup to go. A nice finish for Prosser. That's four points for him as there's a three the other way. And another three. That's Prosser again. Prosser had 35 points in their semifinals win. 27 of them came in the first half. He starts early. Five second call on Giovanni Sejust. And the momentum begins to swing for Berlin Brothers Valley. Up by five. And after that semifinal win, over Lancaster Country Day, Tanner Prosser said that Berlin's gonna bring a lot of people to Shippensburg, and I think everybody can feel the effect of the audience they've brought tonight. Here's Prosser, another three. That one goes off the right side rim and out of bounds back to Linville Hill. And as for the Warriors, this was supposed to be a rebuilding year for them. They lost four starters for last year's team, and now They've got one loss, a District 3 title, and a chance to go to Hershey with a win tonight. Back to Hershey, I should say. Off the rim, two consecutive offensive rebounds. Here's Prosser, three, yes! Nothing but nylon, and Linville Hill calls timeout. Prosser's into double digits with 10 of 16 for Berlin Brothers Valley. And a 16-8 lead with 2.28 to go in the opening quarter of play. You're watching PIAA Basketball on the NFHS Network. I'm Luke Brown. Happy to be with you here tonight. A quick timeout called by Mike Schatzman. Schatzman laid out two goals when he started coaching at Pequay Valley many years ago. Those two goals were one to beat Lancaster Catholic, who were the Peckway Valley rivals at the time. The other was to get to Hershey. It took him till his 10th coaching season to do just that when Peckway lost to Trinity in the District 3 Class 2A final in 2009. This year, or now, for Coach Schatzman, that trip to Hershey's been almost annual with three consecutive district titles for Linville Hill. They're trying to make another appearance to Hershey, and that one falls. Darian Petersheim with a big three and a big time moment 
now only down five. And the difference between eight and five deficit for the Warriors is huge with Berlin not seeming to really stop offensively. Here's a three and another big time three. That's Isaiah Chappell who just subbed in after that timeout making an early impact. Excuse me, that's Hayden Hutzel. An up and down carry call. Nineteen to eleven, one thirty six to go in the opening quarter. And a travel as it looked like Hayden Hutzel was just trying to get his, you know, flow back into that dribble. He was just too discombobulated. Woodville Hill back the other way and a score for Darian Peterson. Peterson's got eight, another three. Prosser cannot be stopped from beyond the arc. 13 for him in the first quarter. Woodville Hill and a foul. It looks like that's gonna be on Prosser and send Steven Smucker to the line. Foul goal number 22, Prosser, his first, team third. To the line, shooting two, Smucker. That's Steven Smucker, the story of improvement for this team. Started playing basketball in sixth grade, played on a lot of the B teams or JV middle school teams. And freshman year, He's all of a sudden a starter for this team. Now as a junior, he's the first program 1,000 point scorer. The only member of that club, I should say. Berlin Brothers Valley discombobulated on the offensive end again, but they still find themselves up nine as this opening quarter comes to a close. Or starts to, quarter three, no good. St. Juiced with a huge rebound and put back score. St. Juiced with the rebound and the bucket. St. Juiced uses that 6-1 frame. Here's Prosser, guarded up top by Steven Smucker. A tough assignment, and so far it has been tonight. Six seconds to go. Prosser hit a buzzer beater to finish the half in their second round game. And this time, this ball's gonna go right back to the Warriors. Wow. Now they get a chance at the last shot. They've got 3.5 to do it. Clock winding down. The shot does not go off the back window. 22-15, exciting opening quarter here from Shippensburg. And a lead for Berlin Brothers Valley. We're gonna take a quick timeout. Berlin up by seven. Second quarter coming up on the NFHS Network. Berlin 22, Linville 15. What an opening quarter of basketball we just had, and it begins once again with a Sage Houston pound to Drew Tibbins. 22-15 opening lead 
for Berlin Brothers Valley. That one just off the shoe of Pace Prosso on a pass attempt from Drew Tibbins. It'll go right back in the hands of Linville Hill. I mean, we were back and forth for a while and then some consecutive threes for Berlin Brothers Valley, especially from one Pace Prosser. Kind of did the trick. But still only a seven point advantage. Linville Hill certainly still has it within reach and an and one to start off the second quarter. Steven Spucker, show him what you got. Spucker and he heads the to the line. And the harm. So Smucker can put him within four, and he does. Smucker was 0 for 2 as the first quarter wound down, and now he hits a big free throw. Berlin on the other end scores. Craig Jarvis gets in from the field. He went 2 for 2 from the line. He's got four total. Jarvis, a part of Berlin Brothers Valley's 1,000 point club. There's another big shot from Drew Tibbetts. A long two. And a four point game again. Linville Hill really just needs to stop more than anything offensively. They need to work defensively. They will get a pass deflection out of bounds. McKelvey four will inbound. And another pass deflection, really putting the, the clamps on, but they can't get a hold of the ball, and that's what they that they truly need. Another four inbound, they're gonna go deep into the hands of Craig Jarvis. An All-State selection last year in Craig Jarvis. To another All-State player, Pace Prosser, he is rejected at the rim. Drew Tibbetts. Linville Hill, tough defense by four, and he's called for the foul. Foul's on number four, McKelvey four, his first, team second. Inbound from Drew Tibbetts. To say juiced, back to Tibbetts. Guarded up top by Hayden Hutzel. Say juiced. Tibbins, one too many steps before a dribble, and he's called for the travel. McKelvey four will inbound to Pace Prosser once more. Twenty-four twenty, six twenty to play in the half. Three ball, in and out on the rim. Say Juice gets the rebound. St. Juice to quarter three. Linville hits it. Jerome Stoltzmas. One point game and a three right the other way. Pace Prosser knows exactly how to deflate a big play by Linville. Every time they hit a big play, Prosser hits one on the other end. Four point game again at 27 to 23. Drew Tibbins to Stoltzfist. Say juiced at the rack. Can't get it. Prosser, a long three. Oh my goodness. Seven point game in the blink of an eye. Prosser is unstoppable from the on the arc. Peterson finds an outlet. Winfield Hill need a, needs a bucket. Say Juiced is the answer. With a rebound and a bucket. 30 to 25, 4.45. Prosser, that would have been quite a sight. He was long. Another Bucket goes for Drew Tibbins of Linville Hill. And a three-point game. 
4-0 run for Linville Hill. And a steal. One on one, Prosser and the finish for Jerome Stoltzfus. A timeout at the 4-17 mark. In the blink of an eye, we had a seven point game. In the blink of an eye, it's back to one. 30 to 29, a full timeout at 4-17. Called by Coach Tanner Prosser, not only the head coach of Berlin Brothers Valley, but also the dad of Pace Prosser. Tanner played his college ball at Grove City College. And Pace Prosser's mom is the women's coach at Berlin Brothers Valley. And on the other end, Linville Hill looking to go back to Hershey. They won their third straight District 3-1A championship on February 29th at the Giants Center in Hershey. Looking to get back there with a win tonight. That's been one of the key goals highlighted throughout the career of Mike Schatzman to get back to Hershey not only once but twice a year when you play in District 3. They've had a tough road on the way. They most recently beat the preppers of MMI Prep 65-29. They beat Greenwood for that District 3 championship and now they're looking to avenge last year's state semifinal loss against Berlin. <laughs> and Berlin after the timeout starts with possession. Pace Brosser from McKelvey four. The defense chance radiating throughout the gym here in Shippensburg. The neutral site matchup for Berlin Brothers Valley, which is located just outside of Bedford and Linville Hill in Lancaster. Is first, team first. Forward to Prosser, who's double teamed all the way up top. They don't want to give up a long three again. A pass whipped to the corner for four. And that out of bounds call We'll go back to Berlin. 3.48 in period number two. Craig Jarvis on the inbounding duties here. This one is taken away by Say Just. Eventually goes out of bounds. For a split second, you thought he's going to pull off a tightrope act and keep this ball in bounds. Probably would have been a breakaway score. Here's the inbounds again from McKelvey 4. He gets it all the way out to Craig Jarvis. Winfield Hill gotta continue that defensive momentum. Jarvis, an unlucky roll off the rim. Say Juiced down the floor, mid-range, takes to take the lead. Does not go from Drew Tibbins. Here's Prosser, pulls up a triple. That one just off the right side rim, a rare three ball miss from Prosser. When he gets going into that shot for him, that ball is just as good as any to go right in. St. Juice trying to work the lane for a lead. It'll give him a trip to the line at least. Of course he was looking for the and one, he didn't get it. The scorer's table is Joey Richardson for Berlin. So here's Giovanni St. Juice. He's got six so far tonight. He can tie it up with one flick of the wrist. And he does. It seems like it's been far too long for Linville Hill since it's been a tie game. And now they have it right back at even even. And now they've got a lead at 31-30. Prosser working the ball all the way up the court. Not enough to find an open three. They take a contested mid-range and it's no good. Linville Hill now trying to get some insurance on that lead. Tibbins to the wing. Yes! Jerome Stoltzfus. Stoltzfus with a huge shot. Here's Prosser to the corner. A corresponding three does not go. Linville by four. 
Another. Oh, you're kidding. Darian Peterson. Linville Hill, the momentum keeps going. Up by seven, another timeout called at the 220 mark in quarter number two. Coach Tanner Prosser again forced to call a timeout because of the momentum that has continued to build and it really hasn't stopped since that seven point lead. Keep going back to remember say you know just in the blink of an eye it's a seven point lead then they get it back within one they go back and forth a little bit say juiced goes to the line knocks down two big free throws and now they're at a 37 to 30 ball game with 220 to go in period two it all started from those two free throws from giovanni say juiced to tie the game really it all started off of a seven point deficit now they've got it the other way. 37-30 with 2.20 to go until we take a break. A lot of momentum, crowd involved for the Warriors of Linville Hill who have one loss to Avid Grove. That was an 11-point loss dating back to December 29th. They've had 20 straight wins since then. Looking to make it 21 and head to Hershey. Three for Berlin. And finally, when it seems like they can't buy a bucket, Craig Jarvis comes into the clutch. Four point lead. Steven Smucker. Smucker, no good at the rim. St. Juice with a huge rebound. And put back score, plus the foul. Foul's on number five, Hutzel. Eight points for Giovanni Sejus. Tanner Prosser running it up the floor and out of bounds. Craig Jarvis, guarded by Smucker. Mikel V4, back to Jarvis. Jarvis through the lane and scores. Jarvis. Two big points from him. Pull this once again within four, 39-35. Linville Hill keeps the possession alive for three. Rolls, no good. Aiden Hutzel collects the scraps, runs it back the other way. 60 seconds to play in the half. Prosser with two quick shifty moves. And a travel. One ref called a foul, the other corrected, had the angle called a travel instead. We play on with 56.2 and Linville Hill in the bonus. Four point lead for the Warriors. Say Juiced finds a bounce pass and a timely bounce pass. Whistle blows and another travel call. Forty, now 35 seconds to play. Jarvis to Smarker, McKelvey four now. Prosser, who looked unstoppable earlier, now misses a mid-range, 20 seconds to go. And another nice finish. It's Steven Smucker again, who's got five. 10 seconds to go. Again, Prosser hit a buzzer beater to finish the half when they played it in their second round game. And there was nearly an and one for Hayden Hutzel. And there's a tech. Believe that's how Giovanni Sejust 
as he bounced the ball pretty high off the wall. Yeah, that's on Giovanni Sejust. And now it's a technical foul. And now a ref jawing with Mike Schatzman, who was pretty fired up at that tech. I mean, it's a high school rule that you cannot bounce the ball in frustration over your head. And that one certainly went over his head. He went off the wall, off one of the Shippensburg Girls Soccer Division Champs banners. Hayden Hutzel knocks down his first free throw, misses his second, and now pays Prosser to the line to shoot the technical foul shots. Schatzman is still trying to get his point across to the official. Prosser knocks down both. And we still have 3.7 to play. And Berlin ball now. I think some of the Berlin guys were about ready to line up on defense. Here's Prosser on the inbound. Contested ball off the backside of the backboard. And that is how we finish things up. 41 to 38. And still we have an issue. Mike Schatzman is still fired up about that technical foul call on St. Just. Both teams heading into the locker room and let that 10 minutes begin. The halftime break here on the NFHS Network. Tensions going high. Three-point game and a fun 16 minutes of basketball we have coming up. NFHS Network will be back with you in the second half. Few things in life are more important than showing up. And whether you show up for your family, friends, or teammates, it doesn't hurt to bring a plate of their favorite beef dish. Together, we bring more. Find your next crowd pleaser at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Well, I'm sick of tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! You see my kid? Yeah, Come yeah. on!
like no. Let's go! Really means let's try. Let's create. Let's explore. And let's do it all together. Few things in life are more important than showing up. And whether you show up for your family, friends, or teammates, it doesn't hurt to bring a plate of their favorite beef dish. Together, we bring more. Find your next crowd pleaser at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. And we welcome you back to Shippensburg High School here in Cumberland County on the NFHS Network. You're watching the PIAA 1A Boys Basketball Semifinals. And remember, at the Giant Center on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you can watch all six boys PIAA Basketball Championships and all six girls PIAA Basketball Championships. That's live from the Giant Center. I'll be with you on the sidelines as well as a great group of guys and and Ashley Shea for the women's games as well calling the games up from the booth and here we have a great game going on as well it is Linville Hill it is Berlin Brothers Valley Berlin Brothers Valley is 27 and 2 on the year they lost their first game of the year at Richland 59 to 47 then they lost to Uniontown later in the year February the 10th that was 67 to 60 both losses. One was an eight-point loss. One was a seven-point loss. Since then, Berlin Brothers Valley has won eight games, six of those being playoff games. They beat West Branch, Southern Fulton, and then they beat Turkey Foot Valley, 81, I'm sorry, yes, 81 to 43 for their District 5 championship. They beat Code Mall Valley, 81-53 for the first round. Lancaster County Christian, 71-53 for the second round, and most recently in the quarterfinals, they beat Lancaster Country Day 75 to 48. Linville Hill has won 20 straight. They beat Greenwood for the District 3 title. They beat Northumberland Christian, Bethlehem Christian, and MMI Prep to get to this spot. And here we go. Second half of basketball on the NFHS Network. Berlin Brothers Valley in the blue. Linville Hill in the whites. Early start for Craig Jarvis as he gets fouled and will head to the line. Again, a three-point lead for Linville Hill and you know these in this spot in the game you don't have huge favorites but I think a lot of people are looking at Berlin Brothers Valley as the favorite here I, I think that a lot of people think that you know coming off of last year's trip to the state championship you know they're just kind of a shoe in to be back playing you know another peop another favorite in Amani Christian uh, early, later this week but right now, Linville Hill, you know, they're not going away. And I don't think any ex anybody expected this to be a blowout. I think everybody kind of looked for a close game here. But this is really close. And there's two more for the Warriors. Steven Smucker. Back the other way. It's Craig Jarvis for three. I mean, you really can't blink in this game. Somebody is down at least shooting, most of the time scoring. Three for the Warriors. Yes, indeed. Darian Peterson continues an impressive day from beyond the arc. He's got 14 points. Mackenzie four. McKinley four, excuse me. Here's four again. Oh good, 0 for 2 on this possession from 3. Now they find 4. First two shots don't matter if you make the third, and he makes the 4. McKelvey 4. Long 3. Does not bury it, and an over the back foul on Linville Hill. Joey Richardson subs into the game for Berlin. Pace Prosser running point. 
But no, actually he's gonna give it up to Craig Jarvis. Jarvis listed as a shooting guard. Jarvis again, part of that 1,000 point club at Berlin. Three ball for Stoltzfus, no good. Rebound, a great rebound. Timely rebound by Joey Richardson upon substitution in this game. He averages 1.9 points per game, 0.3 assists, and 0.8 steals. He averages 4.1 rebounds per game, and you need a player just like that. Joey Richardson comes in with a huge rebound and gets fouled on his way down. He shoots and makes his first above average day for him. Scoring wise, he's got three, looking for four and a tie game with this shot. Cannot make that one. It stays a 1-0 lead for the Warriors. Say juiced and a travel. One point game, Berlin looking to get that lead back. Pace Prosser finishes. Linville Hill finds themselves down, but not for long. Steven Smucker, the ultimate role player. Prosser, that three doesn't go. He shoots a lot of them. And now he's kind of getting some instructions from coach and dad, Tanner Prosser. It's Linville Hill, a travel call. Prosser ever so calmly brings it up the floor. McKelvey four is fouled. You can't even tell with this Berlin Brothers Valley group that they're playing to keep their seasons and some of their Thousand careers alive. Seniors. Especially yeah, Prosser who is a senior. So he's either gonna play his last one tonight or, or this weekend. He'd certainly like to get a gold medal before then. McKelvey four sinks his first. Tie game at 48 apiece. Off the rim, no good. Prosser pacing Berlin up the floor. Mid-range off the back iron. Say juiced. Why not take it? Why not make it? Steven Smucker in the clutch again. 12 for Steven Smucker. Prosser finishes once more. 25 points for Pace Prosser. He is the inevitable, but he can't do it himself. Linville Hill turns it over. And here's a blocking foul. Looks like it'll send Prosser to the line. Foul on number one, St. Jude's pitch court, Keith Fimp. Keith Fimp, Berlin in the bonus. Yeah, Berlin Brothers Valley is now in the bonus. First shot good for Pace Prosser. He is three for three at the line tonight. And has this game tied at 51 each. Four for four from the line and the lead back in the hands of the Mountaineers. They are 4-0 in neutral site games so far this year. 
Here's a three. Quarter. Yes, indeed. Jerome Stoltzfus. Sent it in, Jerome. Lead back in the hands of Linville Hill. Four. Four three. Lead changes going everywhere. 55-54 Berlin. 3.30 to call, to play. And that is a block on Linville Hill as the feet were perfectly set by Prosser. And they will not get the benefit on that one. Foul ball number 32, Smucker. Steven Smucker. Down to underneath baseline, out for four. Now Stoltzfus, pump fakes, drives in, and scores. Hayden Hutzel, Hayden Hutzel excuse me, not Stoltzfus. And suddenly, Berlin trades places with Linville Hill as Linville Hill is forced to call timeout. The last two timeouts that have been called have both been by Prosser. Those were both in the first half as Linville continue to build momentum. Now Berlin is kind of in those sh shoes, building momentum, forcing Schatzman to call a timeout. And you look at what Linville Hill did in their quarterfinal game. It was, it was a hot start more than anything. They scored 21 in the first quarter, 16 in the second, 18 in the third, and then you get down to 10 points in the quarterfinal game for Linville Hill. So it, it's not like it's now or never for the Warriors, but statistically speaking, in their last game, by far the least amount of points were in the fourth quarter. And that makes sense. I mean, you're playing a long time, you know, you're obviously playing tough for however, you know, 24 minutes of basketball. Those last eight are, are perhaps the most difficult they can't have a cold fourth quarter tonight. That's how you'll lose a game. And there is a foul. That one goes against Hutzel. That is the third on Hutzel. Linville gets the possession back. First foul of this quarter for Berlin though, so probably no bonus this quarter for Linville. Diving to the floor, and this one goes right back to Linville Hill. Need a three to get things back even. Right now it's 57-54. Pass goes nowhere. Prosser to four, blocked on the backboard. The rebound goes to Joey Richardson. Talk about just how good of a rebounder he is. Now he comes up clutch with a point two. Five points for Richardson. Woodville finds themselves down five with two to go in the third. Crossover, guarded by Prosser, gets it back out. No shot clock is working in the favor of Woodville Hill as they struggle to find an open shot. Tough defense by the Mountaineers. Drew Tibbins plays catch back and forth with Stoltzfus. I don't know if that's exactly what they were looking for out of that play, but it worked. Hutzel draws his fourth foul. 
Nobody worse to foul in that situation than Hutzel, who now finds himself with four, one away from fouling out in the third quarter. That two doesn't go. And Berlin secures the rebound up by five as we approach the 60-second mark here in the third quarter. Pace, Prosser. Pace, Prosser. 29 for Prosser. And there is a foul that goes against Joey Richardson. The second on Richardson. His second, key third. Under a minute to go in the third. And there is another foul on Berlin who just can't seem to stay out of foul trouble. Matthew Miller. Miller hasn't been in a ton, so that's only his first. And, you know, I mentioned just a couple minutes ago that they wouldn't see the bonus this period. Well, there's still almost a minute to go and four fouls. Linville Hill is out of bounds. Drew Tibbins couldn't get to the long inbounds pass in time. His foot slipped and across the line, and now Berlin Brothers Valley essentially gets a free possession on their own side of the floor. Craig Jarvis on the inbounds to Prosser. Jarvis takes the triple and six it. Craig Jarvis for three. Substitution for Mike Schatzman as he sends him in right away. Checking in for Zero, Brayden, Smoker. Jerome Stoltzfus will inbound right in front of his bench. He hits one, Drew Tibbetts. Spin around move and a score. For Steven Smucker. With the left hand. For two. Smucker with 14. 20 seconds to go in period number three. Jarvis off the backboard, no good. Braden Smoker gets the rebound and nearly finds an inbounds pass to Steven Smucker. Peterson back out to Tibbetts. Five seconds to go. I don't think he knew the time. Now he does, and that's important. Chucks up a shot. No good. Off the backboard. 64 56, eight point lead for Berlin Brothers Valley. Eight minutes of basketball to go and an eight point lead for Berlin Brothers Valley as we get set for the final quarter on the NFHS Network. Back in a moment from Shippensburg. Welcome you back to Shippensburg High School, a loud Shippensburg High School. A trip to the Giant Center is on the line. Fans are on their feet, and for good reason, both sides trying to rally their team to a victory. Berlin Brothers Valley, solid win against Linville Hill in the semis one year ago. 
They went on to play Imani Christian in the PIAA championship game. And now they have an eight point lead and eight minutes to prove themselves worthy for Hershey. A foul again. This one goes against Matthew Miller who picked up his first at the end of the third. Troop Simmons to inbound. Loose ball all the way out to the S representing Shippensburg. The Greyhounds usually infiltrate this building. And there's another foul. This one on a guy you don't want to lose in this game, Pace Prosser. And that is the third on Pace Prosser. I mean, if there's anything that Tanner Prosser addressed in that timeout in between the third and the fourth, it's, it's the foul trouble. I mean, if they've got one guy with four now, they've got their leading scorer with three now with Prosser. They cannot foul guys out of this game with three or four minutes left, especially with a single digit lead like they have now. A three to make it a double digit lead. Craig Jarvis. Jarvis. The three. Jarvis has 18. This one went out of bounds it seems. Drew Tibbins, yeah, he's, got a, he's got a short clock to, to do something. He can't hold it for quite too long. Another foul. Joey Richardson, who's been big with offensive rebounds, picks up his third. Owen rolls off the rim. Richardson picks up a rebound. His specialty. Quarter three, no good. Berlin stays up 11 for now. Prosser, 13 Prosser. point lead. 31 points. Another takeaway for Berlin. Prosser, take flight! Oh, man! Prosser, critical! Can you believe it? 33 for Prosser, and Berlin is up to a 15 point lead. 71 56. Three ball for Linville Hill. Off the window, no good. Prosser, baseball style pass. He's the quarterback as well for the football team. He can, he can launch a few up hand. Steven Smucker finds it one inside. Linville Hill needs a lot of points and needs them fast. Jerome Stoltzfus gets him off to a head start. 71-58. Just under five minutes to go. Prosser. Berlin gonna settle for the mid-range. Off the back iron and no good. Linville Hill needs to make up a 30 and our 13 point gap, excuse me. That one no good from Steven Smucker who's been on fire and you know going back to that quarterfinal game only 10 points for Linville Hill in the fourth quarter I talked in the third about how they can't afford a cold fourth 
And that's what we've had in these first four minutes. Count it for two more for Craig Jarvis. Jarvis up to 20 points. He was part of last year's and his sophomore year's all Somerset County team and an all state selection Darren last year. Peterson. There's Darren Peterson with a big three, but it just seems like nothing will be enough at this point. Timeout called by Tanner Prosser and a 12 point gap. 73 61. And I mean, Tanner Prosser calls the timeout, but it honestly is a multi beneficiary as Mike Schatzman can, can certainly benefit from the timeout. In between the third and the fourth, Berlin actually switched their student, their side of their student section. I, I really can't say I know why, but they are loud and, and proud and, and ready to skip school and go to Hershey on Thursday, I think. The 1A Boys Championship game is Thursday at 2 o'clock. It'll be the winner of this one and the winner of Amani Christian versus Bishop Carroll, which is going on west of us tonight. And that is currently a 96 to 65 Amani Christian lead with under a minute to go. So Amani Christian versus the winner of this one. Assuming that they don't blow a 25 plus point lead in the next 30 seconds. Amani Christian that is. Here we have a 12 point three minute game. Four. Craig Jarvis. Jarvis back out to four. Here's Hutzel, double teamed in the corner. Back out to four at the top. And a reach behind foul on Darian Peterson. The second for Peterson. Four on the inbound to Prosser and a score. Here's Prosser. So didn't realize that ball was going to it. We have a final. It's going to be a Monte Christian official to Hershey on Thursday at 2. Two minutes to go here. And just the dribble of a ball can hype up these Berlin fans. They are so eager to get back to Hershey. And obviously, it's not a given. I mean, crazier things can have happened. But it just seems like with the momentum they have in a 14-point lead, Time included with two minutes. It seems like we're getting a rematch in 1A Boys basketball. And it looks like that could be a foul going against Sejust, who was huge in the first half. No, oh, excuse me, it's on Brayden Smoker, the senior 5'8 guard. Two more. McKelvey, four. It's McKelvey, four. 
Timeout called by Coach Schatzman of Linville Hill. Timeout on the floor, taken by Linville. 1.37 to go. 77 61 lead for Berlin Brothers Valley. Just over a minute and a half. We appreciate you tuning in on the NFHS Network. I'm Luke Brown. I'll be with you on the sidelines later this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'll be your sideline reporter all weekend. Bob Thomas, Ashley Shea, Warren Goodling, and Eric Thomas will also be with you throughout the weekend. Starting things off on Thursday with the 2A girls, 1A boys, 3A girls, and 4A boys, all on the NFHS Network, live from the Giants Center in Hershey. Mid-range is good for Linville Hill. Josh Stoltzfus, the younger brother of Jerome Stoltzfus. Chance of We Want Chocolate now from Berlin student section. They're about 60 seconds away. And Coach Tanner Prosser calls timeout. He's going to get three guys into this game. But first, a quick timeout, 53.8 in the fourth. Also, number 24, Carson Jarvis. And zero, Corbin Cordell. So three, three substitutions coming in for Berlin. Corbin Cordell, Carson Janidlo, and Carson Jarvis. That's a freshman Jarvis, a freshman Janidlo, and a freshman Cordell. So three ninth graders coming in for the Mountaineers. Getting some time in a state semifinal game. Take away, steal, and score for Joe Fisher, Joe the Fisher senior. And again, I mean, this was this was scheduled to be kind of the rebuilding year for Linville Hill. They graduated four starters off last year's team. They lost a lot, and nobody expected them to, to perhaps even even get that District 3 title that they had won in back-to-back years. Like, Travel call first on Berlin Brothers Valley Carson Jarvis who threw up the three and ended up making it. Tough break for that freshman. That three no good off the top of the backboard out of bounds. 11.3 now to play. Cancel your Thursday plans, Berlin. You're heading back to Hershey. And it's raining candy here in Shippensburg. The championship awaits you Thursday at 2 p.m. Berlin Brothers Valley will face Amani Christian Thursday at 2 o'clock in the boys' 1A championship game. Linville Hill season comes to a close at 26 and 2 after a loss on December 29th, 20 straight wins and a loss, a season ending loss here in the semifinal. Two district championship teams who went up against each other tonight, played fast, played physical, a 77 to 65 finishing result as it looks like an Easter egg hunt on the floor. Chocolate and candy everywhere. We sign off on the NFHS Network. A 12-point win for Berlin Brothers Valley, who's heading back to the championship game. For Luke Brown on the NFHS Network, 
Dave Ebenheiser and Alicia Ebenheiser on the controls. We'll see you Thursday in Hershey.